Hey guys, just a quick video on the, make sure I get this right, the MFJ 335BT with the 3 8 24 mount, essentially the um, uh, hamstick mount, but I'm sure they're all similar. Um, I'm really happy about this mount because what I want to do is add a counterpoise wire uh, for when the car is mobile and I can add a counterpoise wire to hopefully complete the other half of the dipole if you understand the vertical antennas. I'm not sure I understand vertical antennas but it's essentially a dipole with using the car as the other side of the ground and grounding issues with the car create all kinds of issues so um, I'm hoping that giving it an actual wire dipole which others have recommended uh, a, a counterpoise wire counterpoise um, will help with grounding um, and I was you know wondering how am I going to do that how am I going to get it attached so I sucked it up and took apart the mount so basically um, what that involved real simple uh, you just and I so I apologize for not showing it but you basically just peel off the, uh, or, or just peel back the uh, tape on the bottom of the mount that just protects your car roof from the magnet and scratching. That peels back. It stays sticky, so it shouldn't be an issue. And you'll see that um, right in the middle there's a bolt um, that holds uh, the top assembly in place. So you just find the socket that fits and ratchet that off. Um, I had to actually get a vice grip to hold the top part of the mount. Uh, but luckily they give you some flat sides where you can either with a wrench or a vice grip or something uh, grab onto that just to hold it in place because they, they really um, ratchet it on there tight. I know the explanation is not the greatest, but it'll make perfect sense when you see it. And then this um, this little mount, or the, the cap cover is just plastic, and that's what goes on top there. But what I really like is they give you access to the center conductor there, which I don't really need, but I guess that's what touches the the upper mount. And more importantly, they give you the braid there. So that's um, the shielding of the coax. So I can just solder directly to that, um, my wire, and just drill a tiny little hole in this plastic here cap, maybe on the other side for that wire to come out. And maybe I'll just leave like a little wire stub coming out and then I can just alligator clip um, whatever length wire I want to put on here. Right now I've got a 20 meter hamstick, so I'm thinking maybe like a 16 foot counterpoise. But if I was operate, if I get some different band hamstick, I could, I could run a longer wire. So I like the idea of being able to um, just alligator clip something on rather than making anything more permanent. Because you can also, I've operated just fine without the counterpoise. Uh, I'm in South Florida. I made a contact uh, to Wisconsin and got an S9 signal report um, without any kind of counterpoise, just using the car body as the ground. Um, and who knows, adding this counterpoise might cause problems. I don't know what's going to happen. But by adding a little stub here, I figure I'll have that option. I can try and experiment. Uh, I also wonder if creating um, certain ground radial patterns like putting the radial on one side of the car versus the other, you know, stringing it over and running it along. If I can somehow aim the signal a little bit, <laughs> who knows? Um, maybe that's possible, maybe not, but main thing is to get a better ground, cut that on noise, and give the RF somewhere to go besides back in the car, because um, this is all part of a remote mobile installation. I'm going to have the car in my driveway, and uh, on a separate battery pack, rechargeable battery pack, and I'm going to operate it, it's going to be in my driveway, I'm going to operate it over Wi-Fi from inside the house, um, I want to do that for a couple of reasons, one is because of, we get frequent lightning and thunderstorms in Florida, this will give me an opportunity to operate on those overcast days when I would normally take down the antenna and not operate, I can operate because I will have no coax coming into the house at all, you know, worst case the car <laughs> gets hit by light, I don't think that'll happen. Um, but also, you know, a lot of, uh, HOAs here in Florida, and I'm not in one that has any antenna restrictions, but other people are. So I know other people are, are 
watching the outcome of this project and seeing if I can pull it off and how well it works. Because this will give you the opportunity if you're in an HOA, just just um, remotely operate your your HF mobile rig in your driveway. Your car's not on. Nobody knows your car's on. Um, yeah, the hamstick's kind of tall, but you can get other HF antennas uh, mobile that are a little less obvious. You know, if that if that matters, if it even matters. Um, and boom, if you have Wi-Fi that reaches out into the driveway, you can operate mobile. Uh, so, and I'm using a Raspberry Pi to control the radio, and I've got a little different approach uh, using some microcontrollers to be able to operate CW, which is what I really want to do. But, and, and, and by the way, what I also like about this MFJ, this little plastic piece here that holds it, the, the coax in, this actually easily pops out. So if your coax ever goes bad, and uh, just getting the door slammed on it and, and whatnot, or just weather, whatever, and you want to, want to replace this coax, um, real easy to do. They, they made it real easy to access, um, so you get a lot of long life out of this thing. I'm, I'm really happy with the per It was 20 bucks, you know? Um, unlike other mag mounts where it's all like kind of sealed in and you, you can't really get it, access to it. Um, yeah, 20 bucks, just go ahead and buy a new one. <laughs> Might be cheaper than trying to replace the coax, but, um, you know, it, it's an option and so I'm happy with that. Um, and as to the strength of it on the roof, um, you know, that will depend on your situation. I don't plan on driving with it on much, it, you know, if at all, it's just to sit in the driveway and on days, which is, you know, many months of the year in Florida when it's just too overcast or too th thunderstorms threatening, you don't want to have um, coax coming into the house. This will keep me on the air, so I'm really happy about it. Uh, but I, I, because I didn't see anybody had shown the disassembly, and I was all, you know, very nervous about taking this thing apart. Um, I wanted to put this video out there so you can see. And again, I apologize for not showing the whole process, but it, again, you, you peel back this tape on the bottom. You'll see that bolt coming up through the bottom, and you just sockets, and you'll get it off. It does take some muscle to get it off and, and you got to hold the top place the top piece in place um, with with some kind of clamp um, so you can start turning it but once you get it to start to turn um, you're all good and if I don't post a follow-up video about getting it back together <laughs> assume that I was able to get it back together no problem um, so i am got some other stuff to do but over this weekend I'm gonna solder um, just I'm gonna see you some speaker wire, some Amazon 14 gauge speaker wire, or something cheap to there. Give myself a little stub, and then like I said, I'll just alligator clip onto it, and boom, got my counterpoise. Maybe it'll help, maybe it won't. We'll see. Um, all right, there you go. This video's already been too long, so don't be afraid to open up your MFJ dash 335BT 24 mount. Um, you know, it's not that daunting. And, uh, all right, the thing to not do, which, which I, <laughs> I thought the top piece, because it gave you those two, um, flat sides, I thought the top piece unscrews. And that's, no, no, that's not how it works. Peel off the bottom tape, there's a bolt on the bottom, you're good to go. All right, 73 is from KN4YRM.